All right, I'm Nikki, and today I'm going to attempt to do a floor mat. This is my first time doing a floor mat. This will be my first request for one, so I'm going to attempt to do a floor mat on a 15 by 15 heat press using my Epson 1430, which is a 13, it can print up to 13 inches wide. So being that this floor mat is larger than a 13 inch, it's going to eventually have to be separated into pieces. I made this uh, floor mat. The size that I'm doing is, let me get to it to show you the actual size. So the actual size that I designed it in is a 24 and a half by 16 and a half. So 24 and a half wide, 16 and a half long uh, in height. So I've already did my design and I'm going to save as, which I've already have saved it as a PDF. You want to save it as a PDF because we're not gonna print directly from, and the program I'm using is Adobe Photoshop uh, 6.0, which is an older Adobe program. So I'm not gonna print it from the program, but I'm gonna transfer this as a, gonna save it as a PDF file. Okay, and it's already showing that it was saved as a PDF. And what I'm going to do is go to Adobe Acrobat. All right, so the Adobe Acrobat has finished updating. What we're going to do is going to go to File, Open. We're going to go to Pictures where we have our image saved. And I have it here. All right, so now that we have our image in Adobe Acrobat, what we're gonna do is we're gonna print. And when your print dialog come up, right now it is set to my Epson Artesian 1430. You wanna make sure that it's set to your printer. You wanna go to properties. And I have it on photo plain paper, portrait mode. And being that I'm gonna print this from 13 by 19 sheets. If you have a printer that prints eight and a half by 11, you leave it there. And it's gonna show you over here how many sheets it's gonna print um, at one time using this size image. So with an eight and a half by 11, you have six sheets that's going to print but being that i have a 13 by 19 i have 13 by 19 sheets already in the printer i'm going to select the 13 by 19 paper size and that narrowed it down to two sheets one more important thing i want to make sure that this is mirrored make sure that your image is mirrored so I have it mirrored. It's set at the 13 by 19 paper sheet size, and I'm good to print at this time. So I'm gonna go to print. And now it should be printing. So I have my image getting ready to print. Let out the paper tray. I am working from home now. All right, so I need to go ahead and fix this. So let me get over there on that side. Give me a second. All right, so let's see what's going on. Let's try pressing. I reloaded the paper. Sometimes the Epson does, um, it has a hard time 
picking up on a sheet. Sometimes you just have to, you know, let it go through again. All right, so I have my 13 by 19 sheets cut out, uh, printed out. And with this method here, of course, we're gonna have to use the cut and tape method. So what I'm gonna do is start cutting. I'm gonna cut, let's see, no, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use this white edge because this edge has more room than this edge. So I'm gonna cut this edge. All right, so with that edge cut, now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna apply tape. On the back of here. And the tape that I'm using is about a, maybe about an inch wide. All right, so this is a it's a little bit larger than an inch wide. This is um, the tape I suggest that you use, not the skinny tape, because the skinny tape is not going to give you a lot of room to play with when having to do the tape cut and tape method. So, and basically what I'm doing is just lining the back with tape. Okay. so that I can apply my second half of my sheet here. I'm going to apply the second half. I'm going to place it right on top. I want to line that up as evenly as possible. And try not to tape the, press the uh, paper on the tape until you have it exactly where you want because this tape here is not forgiving and you don't want to mess up your print. All right, so now that I'm good with that, now I'm going to press it down. All right, so now you have both sheets tape together to give you that one sheet that you need to do your mat. Um, a little bit about this board I'm using. I'm working from home now. So I guess this was a board I had a while back when I had it hanging and I it's some type of cork board. And you would just hang stuff, uh, pin stuff to it. And I just so happened to see it when I was looking for cardboard because I was going to literally cut out some cardboard in order to place the wide mat on but this is going to work out perfectly it's an MDF MDF board it was made in 2010 April 2010 so if you have an old well i'm not going to suggest it now let me see how it works because this is going to be my first time using this board so let's see how it works out all right so i found my doormat and let's see what's going on with these doormats I'm hoping these are the right doormats because I'm seeing prints already on them. And I hope this is not an already made doormat and that I can actually sublimate on them. 
perfect. These are what they look like. So the back is, you can feel the some texture on the back. So I'm assuming this is like more like a skid type, skid, skid, slide resistance, I want to say. Skid, slid, slide, something like that. Get me to lie. So that's what the back look like. And this is going to be the front. And I wish they did not come folded because now I'm going to have to work against this crease. So there's a big crease there I'm going to have to work against. These feel more like bath rugs that soft cushiony. They feel nice, but let's see how they're going to sub. So I already see that this right here is going to be a problem. So let me pre-press this, but I see now that I don't have my lint roller and I would normally lint roll this. But since I don't have my lint roller, I'm gonna pre-press this anyway and continue. All right, so I have pre-pressed it. It came out a little bit, so. We shall see what it does. All right. So I'm gonna make sure that all the grain is going into one direction. So that's why I'm smoothing it to the left. Now what I'm gonna do is apply my image. I'm gonna do it this way apply my image the size i made for the image is perfect i don't have too much overlapping it's fitting right on the outside so i'm good with my image template i am i i, I could cut these borders out but i'm gonna leave them and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just tape it. I'm going to tape it going all the way around. All right, now I'm getting ready to go ahead and put this, take this on over to the heat press. All right, so I am working with my 15 by 15 heat press today. And I'm trying out this cork board for the first time. So I'm hoping it works and not another failure like my shirt was when I tried something different. But let's hope that it works. I am going to flip my image face down, matte face up. Because I do have a tape seam here in the center, I am going to cover this with, um, let's see, I do have some craft paper. I'm going to cover with this with some craft paper. Actually, I have some printer paper. I'm just going to use the printer paper. Being that this paper is from Blanks Galore, I wouldn't have to cover it because it's not going to bleed through. But just because of this tape, I am. I'm just going to cover it. I need to find out where I am first because I'm going I'm to have to do at least four press. And why I'm going to have to do four press is because the mat is larger than a 15 by 15. And let me get an idea of where to start my press. So that's gonna be one and then two. So I'm gonna have to wind up doing four presses.
Just want to make sure I have all my image up under here. So if I do it right here, I should be. Yeah, I should be good. So it's going to end on the other side of the heat tape. I'm going to press it 400 degrees. 60 seconds. All right. Whew. So that probably was a little bit over 60 seconds. So I have to be aware of my time with this next press. Going to slide it over. And now I'm hitting against the TV and I'm still not over. So I'm going to have to move my TV for a second. All right, so I had to move the TV because I'm bright like in my living room and I was hitting that edge of the TV. So I should be good. Yes, I should be good. So I'm going to press this for another... I'm going to do it about 70 seconds. I'm going to do it about 70 seconds. Let me make sure I'm on the back. Look like I may be... Okay. Right there. So I'm going to hit this for about 70 seconds. All right, that should have been 70 seconds. This here heat press does not have a timer, so I literally have to keep count myself. I'm going to flip this around now. And despite how bad I want to look at it to see if it's subbing, I'm not because I do not want to have any ghosting on my rug. A floor mat. All right, y'all. So for a moment of truth, for a moment of truth. So I already know I'm going to have some um, discrepancies with the color. Because I was not counting, to be honest with you. So I wasn't keeping up. Some might have had two minutes, 120 seconds. Some side might have had 70. So let's see. I'm trying not to pull it all the way up. Just in case I do have some spots that needs a little more attention. All right. So I wish you could see this. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to have to flip it. And I did not think to cover my board. I got ink on the board. I should have covered this board. Didn't even think about it. But let's see what's going on with this rug here. This floor mat. So let's see if I can... Bring it down. Oh boy, look. I'm afraid to lift the rest of it up, y'all. Look at those colors. Oh boy. Oh, <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. I'm not quite sure how to tape. Let's see. I don't know how to tape. Maybe when moving it, the tape curled. underneath the rug not quite sure how that happened 
but it's not noticeable unless you stop messing with the rug. I just know I have to be a little bit aware, more aware of that next time. But look, that crease I was concerned about. Let me go ahead and grab the camera so you can see a little closer. All right. This came out better than I thought it was going to come out. It's so nice. It's so smooth. For my first rug, I am very impressed. Like, I amaze myself. So, I'm glad to be able to say I am going to have these for sale on my Etsy, in my Etsy shop. And if you could feel the materials, like slide, like you can just slide across it. And because, like, you know that prior to pressing, I did slide it to the left. But if you slide it to the right, this is what you're going to get. It's still, like, it's still printed. Unlike how if you have, like, the sequence pillow or the sequence you know, uh, sheets or something like that. When you slide it one way, you reveal the silver or the gold or whatever the sequence color is. And then when you slide it the other way, you reveal the image. Where it does, well, this for this rug, you slide it both ways. You know, the image isn't going anywhere. Slide it to the right. The image isn't going anywhere. So I think I'm going to stop playing with this rug. Now I'm just so fascinated by it.